We were speaking to the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, uh, earlier on in the programme about the issue of people seeking international protection. And she was saying that the aim is that the processing time would be brought back to two months, three months, six months, depending on the uh, category into which they fall. But it is going to be at least next year before that happens. In the meantime, it looks like we're going to continue with this revolving cycle of here's a tent, try to find somewhere to use it, then we'll take it off you. Yeah, and I mean, that is, I suppose, a very visible manifestation of the, the government's failure to plan. Uh, the fact that the that tents keep appearing and, you know, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that, that, that like these are housing people, human beings um, who are, are effectively being abandoned. I, I just cannot imagine in, in this, this city is my home. I know it well and I speak the language. I cannot imagine what it would be like to be in a strange place where you maybe don't speak the language and, uh, and, and to be handed a tent and told, go and find yourself somewhere to put it. I think it is really, it is a very visible manifestation of uh, a failing government policy and of the government's complete, total and utter failure to plan. Well, there was an interesting thing in, in what Helen McEntee said this morning, Breed, in that she effectively said that the government isn't funding NGOs to hand out tents. And if they discover that that is what is being done with the funding, there will be questions to ask. Whereas that's exactly what's now happening, as was my understanding. That is the most right wing thing I ever heard anyone in that government say, that they won't fund the NGOs because they're trying to help desperate people. I mean, what sort of a country are they trying to bring us into? I know they're blue shirts, but by God, that's blue shirts and deep blue. Um, and it's it's disgraceful and we should kick back against that. Of course, the doll is closed now for 10 days or so, but we need to raise this very seriously. I mean, it is awful that they hand them a tent, let them sleep there for a week or so and then shovel them all up. I was in Mount Street the first morning that the tents were moved and it's very intimidating, very frightening. It's hurtful. You feel like, you know, these people are being treated like bits of dirt or rats or something. And they're, as, as Louise said, they're human beings. And a lot of them are increasingly coming from Palestine, from Somalia, from absolute places of absolute terror and war. And they make a very dangerous journey and to now, get to a, a place the, the where sort they're of, looking. The government argument would be, well, it's a stopgap measure. When we get people arrive in, we do our best to provide them with what's available, which may be just a tent for a week, two weeks, and then we get them whatever accommodation Well, I we don't can. think they're doing their best with what's available. This city is full of empty buildings, full of empty property belonging to HSE, belonging to the state, belonging to semi-state companies and private office blocks. It's full of them. I was in a refugee camp in Athens that was built inside an old airport ten terminal and it showed that empty buildings are, big empty buildings that have access to toilets and showers are ideal places. You can put individual tents inside them um, and let people live. And the other point is that, you know, she's talking about now processing them two to three months where we need to know, is that just about more staff or are you overlooking certain aspects of their application? That's an important thing to find out. And I would argue while they're being processed, let them work. Let them make a contribution to society. They're all young men with a pair of hands, strong young men. Let them work, let them pay taxes, make a contribution and after the processing, see what happens. Now, so what if that suggestion about the thing of empty buildings, because that comes in by text every time you discuss mm -hmm. this. And if you look at, at the Baggett's, uh, at the Grand Canal encampment as a case in point, they're, they're what, 500 yards from the old Baggett Street Hospital, which mm -hmm. is an empty, I think a HSE building, but it's definitely a large empty so, building right mm -hmm. beside. It's owned by the, the HSE. It is HSE. Mm -hmm. is, is something like that not a, a solution? Well, as far as I know, the department consistently reviews what buildings are available. I think that there's an important point in, in what Breed said, which is that in the last few years, in the scramble post pandemic um, with the kind of influx of people seeking international protection, we have seen a kind of a replay of what we had in emergency homeless accommodation, which I have to say I'm really critical of, which is the privatisation of those services. And what we're seeing now in the last few months is a move away from that. So, you know, the department and the state really trying to invest in state owned and state run um, sites. And I think that's actually really, really important. So I would agree that there are empty buildings. I would agree. And we, we all know that you know, there are problems even within that because we are, are seeing issues around, let's say, arson. We are seeing um, some some elements in society mobilise um, to block the usage of buildings. But I, I do think we need to be clear on a focus of state owned and state provided services because we really have created a rod for our own back and a very poor system in homelessness services, which is around private provision. And it's really incredibly important that we move as quickly as possible away from that 
in in the provision of international protection because you know, in 2020, we were talking about the Catherine Day report and how to move away from direct provision. But we were to also talking about numbers of like 4,000 people. And at best, what we're looking at in the next few years is 15,000 per year. And that is a completely different undertaking. And so I, I, I think it's really important that we hold on to that idea of state provision, not private provision, not private buildings.